The Yakuza, like most criminal gangs around the world, are a male-dominated organization. But every now and then, a female member of the Yakuza takes charge and can be just as ruthless as their male counterparts. So let's explore the secret life of a female Yakuza boss. The major gangs are kept under constant surveillance these days in a continuing war of nerves. Fumiko Taoka is one of the few female leaders of the notorious Yakuza organization. Her reign lasted for three years after she took over the role after her husband and then leader, Kazuo Taoka, passed away. She challenged traditions where men were very much the ones in charge by running Yamaguchi Gumi as successfully as her husband and made a name for herself in the criminal underworld of Japan. Fumiko Taoka was born in 1920 in Hyogo, a Japanese prefecture. She grew up in a family who worked hard but had little money. Her parents' coffee shop was successful enough to keep the family going, but young Fumiko would soon become distracted by another world altogether. When her mother became ill, she put in extra hours at the coffee shop and during one of these shifts, she would meet the man who would change her life forever. Une femme qui est mariée à un yakuza, euh, son quotidien, c'est un, un quotidien d'une femme au foyer euh, typique japonaise. Maintenant, la différence, c'est qu'en général, euh, cette femme de Yakuza aura toujours un peu cette, euh, cette anxiété que son mari rentre ou pas le soir. Kazuo Taoka was 20 years old when he first saw 13-year-old Fumiko. For the last several years, he had been training to become a gangster, but had not yet secured himself a place in a gang. Neither of this mattered to Fumiko and Kazuo, as they both fell in love almost straight away. But before they could explore a life together, Kazuo was arrested and sent to prison for a year. After his release in 1935, the young lovers would be reunited, and Kazuo would even ask her father for his permission to marry her something her disapproving father refused to do. Eventually, with Fumiko going against his every wish, he did the unthinkable and disowned his own daughter. The couple, now free to do as they pleased, decided to live together, and this happened to be around the same time that Kazuo would finally gain membership into a gang, the Yamaguchi Gumi. And what this gang did to rise to the top of the Yakuza world will shock you to the core. But during this era of increasing infighting, the violence didn't end within their own ranks. The Yakuza is always ready to go after anyone who decides not to play by their rules. Between 1915 and 1942, the Yamaguchi Gumi had remained a small operation remaining relatively under the radar. It was started by Harukichi Yamaguchi and then taken over by his son, but they remained a relatively small group. When Kazuo Taoka became Kumicho, he not only intended to increase the dozen or so members, he intended to become the biggest and the best. The first message is to the Yamaguchi Gumi and to the Yakuza that we will not tolerate your presence in the United States and if you do any financial dealings in our country are, uh, are relating to the United States, we will come after your money and you. He took the former gang from the docks to heights they could have never imagined. He utilized extortion, labor racketeering, gambling, loan sharking, smuggling, and many other illicit means of bringing in money. The Yakuza set up their own auditing firms. They set up their own investment houses. They are Japan's largest private equity fund. And so when the Japanese stock market is being manipulated by antisocial forces, uh, that's not a fair deal for U.S. investors. Kazuo had attracted 10,000 members in the Yamaguchi Gumi, and they were becoming a wealthy and powerful organization, something they chose not to hide. That soon caught the eyes of the authorities and their enemies, and soon an attempt was made on his life. The brutal assassination attempt was made by a member of a rival gang, the Matsuda Gumi. While at a dance competition, the the assassin shot Kazuo in the back of the neck in a savage and public attack. Kazuo managed to survive, but his attacker was not so lucky, as several weeks later he was found dead in isolated woodland near Kobe. If you cross the Yamaguchi Gumi, and especially Kazuo, you would be punished. Kazuo didn't earn the nickname The Bear for nothing. He was infamous for clawing at his enemy's eyes. His organization had huge criminal and political power, and they knew how to use that to their advantage. Oh yes, they've, they've got absolutely no qualms 
about taking action against people who offend them. Uh, the well-known Japanese film producer, for example, dared to produce a film which showed the Yakuza as criminals and thugs as opposed to the samurai image they like to portray. Well, he had a run-in with two people with a samurai sword outside his office and he applied hundreds of stitches to his face. And this is a world, world-renowned film producer. Kazuo had become the richest and most powerful gangster in all of Japan, and Fumiko played a huge part in his success. Almost immediately after they moved in together, Kazuo was sentenced to eight years incarceration, and that left Fumiko with a huge predicament. Does she stay? Or does she go? Despite her father's pleas to return home, she decided to stay by her love and even communicate with other members of the gang on his behalf. She gained respect from the members and began to prove that she had what it took to be a leader's wife and so much more. After his release in 1943, it took him only three years to conquer the ranks of the Yamaguchi-gumi, and after the death of the mob boss, he finally had his chance to lead them to success. And now they were married. Fumiko would adopt the life of being a wife to a member of the Yakuza. Ne devient pas Yakuza quand on est une femme. Euh, en revanche, les femmes qui ont épousé des Yakuza font totalement partie du, du groupe. Après, leur rôle va dépendre en fait du, du rang du rang hiérarchique de leur de leur mari. Mais une femme qui aura épousé un chef, par exemple, aura des responsabilités liées au groupe. Elle agit. Euh, à, travers, euh, à travers le chef, puisqu'elle a un rôle de, de conseillère, elle gère les finances. But as soon as her husband became the boss, her responsibilities increased, as tradition calls for the world of the Yakuza. Depending on which Yakuza you marry, your role will vary. The wife of the boss has a vital role in the group. She is the boss's shadow. She walks by his side and knows everything. Her role is to look after the young recruits and advise the boss. If the boss goes to jail or dies, his wife takes over the group. But she would go beyond the tradition and would become something of a godmother and would nurture other members when they needed. She would run other gangsters' businesses while they were sent to prison and would become a major part of many of the business meetings of the Yamaguchi-gumi. The couple had a child, and Fumiko adopted the extra responsibility in her stride until, in 1981, she would face the biggest challenge yet as her life was about to take a tragic turn. At 68 years old, Kazuo's lifestyle finally caught up with him, and he suffered a fatal heart attack. A heartbroken Fumiko barely had time to mourn, as there was confusion throughout the ranks as to who would step up to the leadership role. The problem wasn't the lack of suitable candidate. The problem was that they were either in prison or already dead. This left the Yamaguchi-gumi in a predicament. Do they wait for a successor to be released, or do they take a chance with someone new? It turns out they compromised and made Fumiko the boss. The the most powerful male-dominated organization now had a woman at the helm, and she had no plans to go soft on anyone. All these places used to have to pay protection money to the Yakuza, anywhere between 150 euros to more than 800 euros per month per bar. So when a clan controlled around 100 bars, it could make 80,000 euros a month, or sometimes much more than that. The decision to place her at the top sent shockwaves throughout the Yakuza world, as a female leader had never been appointed to the biggest Yakuza gang of all. The idea was for her to keep the peace, and working with eight other high-ranking members, she not only managed to succeed, but go beyond anything anyone could have ever expected. Transnational criminal organizations have exploited these advancements to expand their operations and influence and to evade justice. She was reported to be just as strict as her husband and had no problem dealing out pain and suffering when she saw fit. For her three-year reign, she oversaw millions of dollars of business, both legal and illegal, and even expanded the Yamaguchi-gumi into new territory, reaching most of Japan's prefectures. <laughs> これ
She endorsed the distribution of illegal narcotics and even managed to expand the membership to over 13,000, a figure even her husband had never managed to achieve. Jake Adelstein is an investigative journalist in Japan and the author of Tokyo Vice, a book that traces his 12 years tracking Japan's mob. He points out the two mob leaders operate so openly in Japan fan magazines and comic books are dedicated to them. Their syndicate, the Yamaguchi Gumi, is Japan's most powerful mob, one Adelstein says has a deep reach into corporate Japan and the stock market. But Fumiko must have always known her leadership would be temporary, and after three years, her time was finally up. Fumiko would be instrumental in choosing her successor, and she had one candidate in mind, Masahisa Takenaka. Here is a traditional ceremony, making him the head of a five and a half billion dollar business. With the drinking of the sake, he assumes a mantle of Oyabun, or boss. The Yamaguchi Gumi is headquartered in an office building marked by the gang symbol for all to see. There was no need to hide. At the time, he seemed like the perfect man for the job, but his appointment caused some controversy, especially with deputy leader Hiroshi Yamamoto. He had also been a contender, and he did not take well to being overlooked. He took over 3,000 of Fumiko's men and formed the Ichiwakai, who would become deadly rivals with the Yamaguchi Gumi. They would all soon become embodied in the Yama Ichi War, which would claim many lives and cause an irreparable rift with those involved. Yamamoto sent gunmen to Takenaka's house and murdered him, along with some of his top men. And when new Yamaguchi Gumi leader, Kazuo Nakanishi, was appointed, he declared an all-out war. The Japanese people would live in fear, and the war affected business and kept many people off the streets after dark. Police in Japan have arrested the suspected head of the Kudokai, one of the most violent Yakuza organized crime rings. Satura Nomura is alleged to be involved in the 1998 murder of the retired head of a local fishing cooperative. The Yamaguchi Gumi would need help to win the war. And for that, they turned to the American Mafia. They managed to strike a deal, illegal narcotics in exchange for weapons. But these would be no ordinary weapons, as they required something that packed a bigger punch. As well as handguns and machine guns, the Americans offered to hand over several rocket launchers in a game-changing exchange that would change the tide of the war. But all was not as it appeared, and the Japanese gangsters were in for the shock of their lives. As it turns out, the American mafia they had been dealing with were in fact undercover officers of the law, and the Yakuza members were all promptly arrested. The war would finally come to an end in 1986, when an Ichiwakai businessman, Hideo Shiragami, would be found dead in the sea. In the end, 36 gangsters were killed, and many more were seriously wounded in an estimated 220 gun battles across Japan before the Yamaguchi Gumi officially declared a truce. Just three years after their defeat, the Ichiwai Kai were down to only a few hundred members, while the Yamaguchi Gumi had swelled to over 20,000, and even reached as high as 34,000 members by the year 2000. But the Japanese were slowly gearing away from accepting the Yakuza as part of their everyday life, and government policies were now making it even harder to operate. <laughs> Since we're not allowed to have a bank account, we can't make bank transfers to pay for our children's school canteen. And so the school immediately recognizes that we're Yakuza. This isolates our children and our grandchildren. Japan had simply had enough of the Yakuza influence. The authorities effectively declared war on the Yakuza in the 1980s, but they have been helped by the economic and demographic problems the gangs have faced ever since. A lot of gangs tried to legitimatize their operations during the peak of Japan's bubble economy years and went into finance, but they lost heavily when the bubble burst. He is the godfather of Japan's most powerful mob family. A swaggering, law scoffing, and always hat wearing crime syndicate leader. Now, 70 year old Kenichi Shinoda is also a global target. The U.S. Treasury moved to block Shinoda and his deputy. 
and as the numbers of members dropped, the gang slowly began to fade away. Shinichi Ishizuka, a law professor and director of the Criminology Research Center, was reported as saying, For the last 20 years, young people in Japan have had little interest in joining a gang because it's poorly paid, long hours, and a violent way of making a living. People don't want that, and they would rather have a proper job. So gang members are inevitably getting older and not getting replaced. Fumiko Taoka ruled her empire before the introduction of the anti-gang laws that brought down the demise of the Yakuza. But it is perhaps ironic that Fumiko's last appointment after a highly successful run as a gang boss would cause the biggest rift in the history of the Yakuza, and maybe even bring about the beginning of the end, way before the government intervened. Her death at just 66 years old left a huge hole in the Yakuza world, and her funeral was a major event. Members from across the world came to attend and pay their respects to the true godmother of the Yakuza. The legacy of Fumiko Taoka changed the face of the Yakuza, and although as a female her reign is rare, she did earn the respect of her own and other men as one of the best gangsters in Japanese history. Let me know what you think of the extraordinary life of this brutal yet cunning woman, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more of the world's biggest criminals.